This is how you can make a URL virus scanner command for your Discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any other other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also offer the bot tier, which is a full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos. And we have four bot packages, which are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description if you you're interested and with that let's go and get into the code all right so to start go ahead and go to the link in the description below and go ahead and click on sign up you can go ahead and create an account here once you have an account you're going to want to go ahead and click on the api key section at the top from here you're going to get this api key just go ahead and copy this and then over in the code we can go to the dot env and i've made some space so i don't have to blur anything out i've gone ahead and created a virus api key go ahead and paste your api key within this variable so that we can access it within our command all right so after you do that we're going to go over to user installs because we are going to make this a user install command so that you can use it everywhere because that's kind of the point of the video. Let's say somebody sends you a link on Discord. You can just run a real quick command to see if there's a virus before you click it. So within this, we're going to go ahead and create virus check.js. Uh, we're going to start off by getting our slash command builder as well as our embed builder. And then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package. Then we can do const axios equals require and we're going to get our axios package. Then we're going to do module.exports and we can open this up. We're going to get our data, which is going to be our new slash command builder. We're going to go ahead and set a name, which is going to be virus check. We're going to go ahead and set a description, which is going to be check a URL for a virus. Then we're going to add a string option and we're going to go ahead and do option arrow function and we can do option dot set name. We're going to just go ahead and give this a name of URL with a description of the URL to check and we're going to go ahead and set require to true. We can add a comma, we're going to do async executes, we're going to get our interaction and we can open this up. We're going to start off by getting our options and we're going to set that equal to our interaction. We're also going to get our URL from our options. So we're going to get our string and that is going to be our URL string. Then we're going to go ahead and do a wait interaction dot defer reply and we're going to go ahead and set infirm multi true on that message that it is a hidden message. Then we can go to write out our send message function and we're going to go ahead and provide a message parameter and we can open this up. Then this we're going to get our embed which is going to be our new embed builder. We're going to go ahead and get a color, which is going to be blurple. We're going to go ahead and get a description, which is going to be our message. And then we can send this with our await interaction, our reply. And actually we're going to have to edit our reply because we deferred a reply above. Let's get our embeds just like that. And because we deferred a reply within Firmal, we do not have to set it within the actual edit reply. So now that we have all of our basics set up here, let's go ahead and write out our function to actually check the URL for viruses. So we're going to do async function. And we can call this check URL. We're going to pass in our URL parameter and we can open this up. We're going to open up a try catch and we're just going to catch an error. And within this, we're going to go ahead and return and we can just go ahead and return a string and I'm going to go ahead and get an error emoji. And then within this, we can go ahead and say an error has occurred while checking this URL. Uh, and then we can just add a semicolon. So we've set up our try catch. Now let's go ahead and get all of our information. So we're going to go ahead and get two variables. The first one is going to be a URL to check. Um, and then we're going to encode the URI with our URL variable. So we're going to make a little encoding there. And then we're going to go ahead and do const API URL equals, and we're going to get this very specific link. So it's going to be the virus total API. And then we're going to get our process.env.virus API key, which is what we just set up uh, before we actually wrote all of this code. Then we're going to go ahead and do and resource equals and then URL to check. So make sure you pause this video and copy this exact URL down. Then we're going to go ahead and do const response and we can do equals and we're going to do await axios.get and we're going to get our API URL. So after we get our response variable, we can do const data equals and we can do response.data. Now we're going to do if data and we can do dot verbose message. So we're going to do this equals and I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this down because this is a very specific message that we have to check. Um, and essentially what it's going to say is resource does not exist in this data set. And if that is the case, then we're just going to go ahead and return. And just like we did in our catch error, we're going to catch another error and we're going to say that is either not a valid URL or does not exist within the data set. So we're just going to go ahead and return if that's true. Then we can do const scan dates equals new dates and we're going to get our data and then we can do scan underscore dates. And we can also go 
go ahead and do const formatted dates equals, and I'm gonna go ahead and get a string, and we can do an arrow, we can do t, and we're gonna get our math.floor, and we can do our scan date dot get time, uh, and then we're gonna divide that by 1,000, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish that off, and we can do f with an arrow just like that. All right, so after we have that, let's go ahead and do var, and we can do results equals an empty string, and we're gonna go ahead and do if data dot positives uh, is greater than zero. If that is the case, we're gonna go ahead and set our results, and we can do equals, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get an arrow, and we can get a caution emoji, and we can go ahead and say this website contains viruses and we can go ahead and say use the link below to track each virus on the site and we're going to finish that bolding uh, then we're going to go ahead and say else and we can do results equals and i'm just going to go ahead and get an arrow emoji and i'm going to get a soap emoji as well and we can just go ahead and say this site is clean and safe to use just like that all right so after setting that all up let's go ahead and do const data object and we can go ahead and open up a new object we're going to get our url and we're gonna set that to an arrow and we can go ahead and get a link. Then we're gonna go ahead and say checked URL and we're gonna go ahead and copy our URL variable into that as well. So following that, we're gonna get our scan date with another arrow with a calendar emoji and our scan date. And then we're gonna do our formatted scan date variable. Then we're gonna get our positives and that's going to be an arrow, a mailbox emoji with the positives. We're gonna do backslash tick. We can do data.positives divided by data.total. So essentially what we're getting there uh, is the positives are the virus scans that came back positive or true, meaning the site has viruses. So it's going to come back, let's say four viruses out of maybe 60 scan possibilities, meaning it does have a virus within that site. Then we're going to pass in our results for our results, just like that. And the full is going to be an arrow and we can do say click here within brackets and then within parentheses right next to it, we're going to do data.permalink and then we can say to view the full results of this scan. So now that we have our object with all of the data, we can just go ahead and return and I'm just going to go ahead and get a globe emoji and I'm going to go ahead and bold it as well. We can say your virus scan report and we can bold this and we can do two backslash ends. We're going to do object and we can do dot values and we're going to do data object and then we're just going to go ahead and join these together with a backslash n. We're going to follow that with two backslash ends and we're going to say please note and we're going to go ahead and say the scan date is not the time you ran this command. We can say uh, it's the time the virus API most recently checked the website for viruses. So that's just some important information that we should provide the user with. Uh, so once we're done with all of this, we've created both functions. So let's go ahead and save our output equals and we can go ahead and do await and we can do our check URL function and we're going to pass in our URL Then we can do await send a message and we've already formatted everything within the return statements. Uh, even our errors are formatted into strings with the emojis. So all we have to do is put in our output. So this function is actually really nice because it's going to be checking for a couple of different errors. Uh, if it gets those, it's going to send the error as the output. So we don't actually have to format the error. Um, and then obviously, if we don't get an error, we have a nice returned formatted string with all of the information from the object in it also returned. So we don't have to do any of that formatting either. So with that, we are actually done with this entire command, but like I said in the beginning, we're gonna be using user installs. If you haven't set user installs up, go ahead and watch the video in the description below. This is going to basically allow the user who installs this bot onto their account to be able to access the command in a server that the bot is not in, in a group chat or in a DM. So let's go ahead and go over to our functions. We're gonna go over to handle commands and I've gone ahead and created a quick little logical check uh, right here. It's going to be await client.command array for each. We're gonna async our value. We're gonna check if our value.name is equal to our command name, which is virus check. And if it is, we're gonna console.log the value as a string. So let's go ahead and run the bot using our terminal. And as you can see here, we have our log. So this is going to be the option. So let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna go over back into our command. Now that we have this, I'm gonna go to make a comment at the top and I'm gonna paste that out. So right now we're gonna go ahead and comment this out because we have to convert um, the slash command builder into JSON. So let's go ahead and do data and we're gonna get our name and this is going to be everything we did before. So we're actually just gonna go ahead and copy and paste the virus check because we did that before. Uh, then then we can go ahead and get our description, which again is what we did before. So check a URL for a virus. Then we're gonna get our options. So this is the string that we did here um, in the comments. But before we paste it in, let's just go 
ahead and format it. So let's go ahead and remove the object and let's go ahead and add a comma. And then now that it's formatted, we can go ahead and copy and paste that in there. Um, and then finally, we're gonna go ahead and get our integration types and our context. So we currently have the integration type as one, but because this command could be used in a regular guild as well as a user install, let's just go ahead and say zero as well. So we're adding it to both guilds and the users and context will allow everything. Then we can just add a comma here and we're good to go. I'm gonna go and remove the comment from above, but I'm gonna leave the slash man builder code in here just in case we need to access it later. And with that, let's go ahead and save the file, restart the bot and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna get our virus check command. Um, and as you can see, it's gonna say this app is uh, beta because it's a user install. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste a URL. Maybe we can do YouTube. So we can get our youtube.com and we can just send it. So YouTube is obviously a safe link. Um, and as you can see, we immediately get our virus scan report. So we're going to get our checked URL, which is going to be YouTube. So we have our scan dates. Uh, we have our positives. We have the site is clean and safe to use. So it means the positive zero out of 93 means that there's no viruses. And then we can click here to view our results. So when we view our results, as you can see, we have a lot more information and obviously that's all clean. So let's go ahead and test one more thing out. And then I'm going to test this out in a group chat in a discord server. So I can kind of show you the point of this. This is a URL that I got from ChatGPT that's meant to be uh, tested for virus checking software. It's just like this one. It does have viruses. So if we go ahead and actually send it, um, now as you can see here, it says it checked the URL with our scan date, which was March 17th. And now we have four out of 93 positives. So it says the website contains viruses. Click the link below to track each virus on the site. So if we view our actual API here, as you can see, we now do have malicious uh, errors on this API call, meaning the website does have viruses and you should probably not be on it. But that's kind of the point of this command. Now let's say we were over in the official developer server and somebody sent me a link that I was unsure of. All we'd have to do with the user install command is copy it and we just go and and access our user installs. As you can see, my bot is in the developer server with our user install commands. I would have to do is check our virus. We would copy the link they sent us. We'd send it. And as you can see here, it would send us our virus report. Now, this is a clean site. It's safe to use. So then we'd go up here and we'd be able to actually access their website. That is a very nice feature that we could add to a user install command because it's something that a typical Discord user might want to uh, check. Maybe they've been sent a link in their DMs. All they would have to do is go into their DMs and run this command, and then they'd be able to uh, view all the information on the site before they actually click it. Uh, which is very important to do. So that's how you can make a user install virus check for URLs for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here. we will be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.